Number one gives us a table for a landscaping company that's delivering crushed stone to a construction site. The table shows the weight in pounds, which they're calling W on the right hand column, and the number of loads of crushed stone N on the left hand column, which equation could represent the total weight in pounds for N loads. So if we had n loads here, how would we get to this number? So zero doesn't really tell us anything. The one tells us that one load is 2,000 pounds. Then two loads is 4,000 pounds or two 2,000s. Three loads is 6,000 or three 2,000s. So then N is going to be N times 2,000. So however many loads we have times 2,000. And another way we could write this is by writing the 2,000 first and then timesing it by the N, which we see down here as option C. Number two, members of the band sold juice and popcorn at a college football game to raise money for an upcoming trip. The band raised $2,000. The amount raised is divided equally among the M members of the band, which equation represents the amount A that each member receives. So each member receives a portion of the 2,000. So they take the 2,000 and they divide it up equally among all of the members, which in this case we're calling M, and we see that as option B. Number three, Tyler needs to complete this table for his consumer science class. He knows that one, tablespoons can, one tablespoon contains three teaspoons and that one cup contains 16 tablespoons. So we wanna fill in this table first. So we know that one cup equals 16 tablespoons. So if we had one cup here, we would have 16 tablespoons. This time we have two cups. So we're gonna have two times 16 or 32 tablespoons. So when we start in this column to get here, we multiply by 16. So then the reverse of that, if we're going backwards, so if we're already in tablespoons, to get backwards, we would divide by 16. So here we have 12 tablespoons. So we have 12 out of 16 cups, because we know that over 16 would be a cup. So 12 sixteenths of a cup, and we could simplify this down to three fourths of a cup. And then we can check this bottom one. Three times 48 is 16, is four, or sorry, three times 16 is 48. So we started here multiplied by 16 to get to that one. So then the next column, um, it said that one tablespoon is three teaspoons. So one tablespoon, so one here gives us three teaspoons. So that would be multiplying to go from tablespoons to teaspoons, or the backwards version of that would be dividing. So if we have the teaspoons, then we would divide by three to get the tablespoons, which we see 36 divided by three is 12. So here, 32 times three would give us 96. So there's 96 teaspoons in the 32 tablespoons in the two cups. Then here we're at the tablespoons. So to go to the teaspoons, we're gonna multiply by three again. And so when we multiply by three here, we get 144. Now it wants us to write an equation that represents the teaspoons contained in C cups. So if we had C cups in this column, how many teaspoons would we have? So we need to get all the way over to here. So again, to go from cups to tablespoons, we would multiply by 16. So this is gonna be 16 times C. And then to go from 
tablespoons to teaspoons, we would multiply by three. So now we're gonna take this 16C and multiply by three. 16 times three gives us 48 and then C. So um, the number of teaspoons contained in one cup equals 48 times the number of cups that we started with. Number four, the volume of dry goods like apples or peaches can be measure, measured using bushels, pecks, and quarts. A bushel contains four pecks. So if we think bushel, peck, quarts, I just like to do it like we did in the table in the last one. So if we have um, one bushel, then we multiply by four to get the pecks. So then we would have four. And then one peck, so a peck contains eight quarts. So to go from pecks to quarts, we would multiply by eight. So in this case, we've got four times eight would be 32. So this is kind of the conversion um, of all of them. So then now it says, what's the relationship between the number of bushels, B, and the number of quarts? So we just take B times four to get to pecs. So that would be four B. And then we would take the number of pecs, which in this case is four B, multiply it by eight, and we get 32 B. So the number of quarts is equal to 32 times the number of bushels. Number five, the data shows the number of free throws attempted by a team in its first 10 games. The median is 12 attempts and the mean is 11.5. After reviewing the data, it's determined that the two should not be included since it was an exhibition game rather than during the regular season. So what happens to the median if the two is removed? So now we only have nine data points. So the middle one is gonna be the fifth. That will give us four below it and four above it. So the median stays the same. So the median is still 12. But what happens to the mean if the two is removed? So we know the original mean is 11.5. And we did that by adding all the numbers and dividing by 10. So in this case, so the original total was 115. The new total without the two is going to be 113. And then we only have nine games now. So now we'll do 113 divided by nine for our mean. And now our mean goes up to 12.55. So it goes up about a little over a point there. The standard deviation for a set is zero. What can you conclude about this data? So there's many different things you can say about this. Um, one is that if the standard deviation is zero, that means there's no variability. So there's no variability in the data. So all the data values would be the same. You could also say other things like the mean would equal the median would equal the data values. Since all of the values are the same, it's a uniform distribution. And I'm sure there's other things you can come up with. That's just a couple off the top of my head. Number seven, Elena has $225 in her bank account. She takes out $20 each week for W weeks. After W weeks, she has D dollars left in her bank account. Write an equation that represents the amount of money left in her account after W weeks. So maybe you can write this right away, but you can also set up um, some examples to help you see a pattern. So she starts with 225. 
So then after the first week, she's going to take out $20. And then she'd have her leftover amount. If she did this for two weeks, then she'd take out 20 the first week and 20 the second week. If she did this for three weeks, she would take out 20 the first, 20 the second, and 20 the third week. And so on if this continued. So now when we're talking about doing this per week, you want to see weeks in the way that you write this. So one thing to do would be to, be, to write 225 minus... And how many times is she taking the 20 out? Well, she's taking it out one time here, right? In this next one, how many times did she take out 20? Well, in this case, she took it out two times. So she took out two times 20. In this third example, how many times did she take out 20? Well, she was doing this for three weeks. So this kind of helps you see where the week or the per week is changing what's happening. So to help you write it in an equation. So the amount of money that she has left, D, is going to be equal to what she started with minus 20 times the number of weeks she took it out. And that is just from rewriting this kind of as the W 20 first and then the W. So here's that W for the number of weeks that she's taking $20 out of her account. Number eight, Priya is hosting a poetry club meeting this week and plans to have fruit punch and cheese for the meeting. She's preparing eight ounces of fruit punch per person and two ounces of cheese per person. Including herself, there are 12 people in the club. So from doing an example like this previously, I just want to kind of write out maybe something to do with that before I get to the next ones. So for the fruit punch, which maybe they give us a variable for down here, they give it to us as F. So she's planning on fruit punch of 8 ounces per 12 people. Then the cheese, so they're calling cheese C, the cheese she's planning on two ounces of cheese for each of the 12 people. So I'm just going to kind of write out those equations just to start because I remember doing an example like this previously. All right, then in the next set, it says a package of cheese contains 16 ounces for $3.99. A one gallon jug of fruit punch contains 128 ounces and costs 250. So the other thing you're gonna wanna know is how much fruit punch you're gonna need. So in this case, eight times 12 is 96 ounces and two times 12 is 24 ounces of cheese because then we're gonna have to probably figure out how many packages we need. So I'm just gonna leave those kind of sitting there. So let P represent the number of people in the club, F represent the fruit punch ounces, C represent the ounces in cheese, and B represent the budget in dollars. So select all equations that could represent quantities here. So I'm going to grab these. So I already talked about those ones. And so we see that F equals 8 times 12 would be the ounces she's planning of fruit punch per person. So the ounces and then per person of fruit punch. So A is good. Then for part B, um, this says C is the ounces of cheese. So C should be the number of ounces of cheese, which two is the number of ounces, but $3.99 is the cost. So this is giving us the cost really of two packages of cheese, which is not what C represents. C represents the ounces of cheese, not the cost. Part C is telling us um, 2 times 399 plus 250 equals B. So this one is talking about B, which is the budget in dollars. So this one is saying that we're having two packages of cheese since that's the 399. So we're going to have to check if that's what we need. And then 250 is the punch. 
So the punch gets us 128 ounces and we only need 96. So we do only need one gallon of fruit punch. So that's correct, spending 250. Then for the cheese, the cheese is 16 ounces. We need 24. So we are going to need two packages of cheese to get to 24 ounces. That'll get us 32 ounces, but that'll get us enough to cover the 24 ounces we need. So two packages of cheese at 399 and one gallon of fruit punch is our budget. That is true. Part D tells us that two times the punch, or sorry, two times the people, so P is people, so two times the number of people equals, and C is the ounces of cheese. And that's correct because we are doing two ounces of cheese per person. So two times P would be the number of ounces of cheese that we need. And then part E uses B again, which is the budget. So we're going to need the um, money in this equation, and we don't have the money in the equation. So E is going to be incorrect. Number nine, the density of an object can be found by taking its mass and dividing by its volume. So taking the mass and dividing by the volume. That's going to give us the density. And let me move this down so I can maybe write the word density here. So for part A, it says the mass is 500 grams and the volume is 40 centimeters. And we're supposed to be writing equations to represent these situations. So the mass, we take the mass and we divide it by the volume. So 500 divided by 40 would be our equation for that situation and it, or our expression. And then I'll say density equals that. You don't have to simplify it. You could. Next one, the mass is 125 grams and the volume is V. So we still put the mass on top and we put the volume on bottom. This time the volume is just a letter or a variable V. Part C, the volume is 1.4 cubic centimeters and the density is 80 grams. So 80 is going to equal our mass divided by our volume, which they tell us as 1.4. The other thing you can think of is the opposite of dividing by the volume would be multiplying it. So another thing you could do here is say that the mass is going to be equal to 80 times 1.4. And then D, the mass is M grams. So the mass goes on top. The volume is V that goes on the bottom and that equals our density.